Governor, yeah. two new polls today show the measure below 50% for the first time. Uh, it started high, it's been on this trajectory. How do you turn this around the last two weeks? Is it realistic uh, to do so to get it above 50 Sure. Look, uh, it's never been more than 52% in the polls that I've seen. Uh, our polls show 10, 11 points uh, on the one end and maybe 7 or 8 on the other. Uh, there are a lot of polls out there. This is a close election. It depends on what happens between now and Election Day. I'm confident that the voters, uh, when given all the information, are going to invest in their kids, invest in the future, uh, invest in our university. Uh, the university president is not exaggerating. He has seen these cuts over the years. We know we have 30,000 fewer teachers. Proposition 30 really does a great deal to fix what's been healing our schools and our state. So all I can say is you have a shadowy committee that uses secret money laundered through the state of Arizona with uh, a handful of people, maybe a few dozen, from the finance industry against uh, the virtually unanimous support of the education community, the teachers, uh, the principals, uh, the administrators, the superintendents, uh, business community, uh, large businesses that understand. So to me, it, it's real simple. I can say it in a sentence. It's money into the schools or money out of the schools. And where the vast uh, bulk of the money comes from, it comes from people who are at the top of the economic pyramid, and they can give another 1% or 2 or 3 That's really it. And then everybody else chips in a penny when they make a $4 purchase. It's, it's pretty simple. Now, we got about 10% uh, undecided, maybe more, depending upon how you push people. Uh, I think we have a very good chance to win, but I'm not going to let anything slow me down between now and Election Day. Governor, you, you talked about people at the top of the economic pyramid yeah. paying most of this, and you you repeat that on the stump. That, that message tends to resonate with voters, and polls have shown that's a popular idea, but it's not in your paid messaging at all. I mean, why, why did you make a decision to not focus on... Uh, I do. I do mention it. If you saw, saw my, one of my ads, I do mention it just a little bit from the, the very... Uh, most affluent. Um, it's always dicey when you start looking at different aspects uh, of our uh, stratified society. Uh, and and it, it's hard to find the right uh, phrases, the right words. <coughs> but the truth is, the God's honest truth is that money that is in the hands of people who are fabulously wealthy, have done so good, will have to give 1% when they hit over 500,000 for a married couple, as most are, or 2% after three quarters of a million, or three over a million. 99% of the people aren't in that category. So it's hurt the schools or take a little money from people who can well afford it. It's so obvious that it is a little puzzling that the polls are a little higher. But they're in the ballpark. We're ahead. and. Uh, I think from all the internal uh, numbers that I've looked at, this can be one. Do you think Governor, the campaign has hit that message hard enough, though, that uh, in terms of who is... Well, you know, everybody's so afraid to mention that taxes are even involved. I mean, we, we're, we're walking, we walk on eggshells. Uh, but I do, everywhere I go, and in one of the commercials that I shot, I did say it does come from, you know, a relatively powerful group. And by the way, I'm very proud to say that more billionaires are supporting Proposition 30 than opposing it. So, Governor, I don't know if anybody ever knew that, but there's a number of them, and I honor them for their success and thank them uh, for their donations. But if you look at the reports, you'll find I think we have more uh, than the other side does. But whatever it is, uh, it's real simple. <laughs> I don't think this president over here is kidding. If he thought there was another way, he'd find it. He just sent out a letter um, to everybody telling them what the consequences. And that's not an advocacy letter, that's an information letter vetted by the attorney. So we know it is about the truth. It's not about any propaganda or exaggeration. He's saying what the consequences. Big consequence to the university, big consequence uh, to the kids uh, K through 12. Can you say there won't be a tuition increase in property passes? Well, there certainly won't be one this year. What about next and I'll work, year? I'll, possibly next year, but not this year. Uh, not this year, and I'm going to work like hell uh, to, uh, to stop it next year. I'm going to find different ways. And just like government's got to be more efficient, 
university's got to be more efficient, and we've got to look at all our other programs, because the university, it's not just an engine uh, for economics. It's also an engine of citizenship and creativity and imagination, and, and that's fundamental uh, to the kind of character of California. Governor, some voters are skeptical, saying that this money really is not in a lockbox. There's no guarantee that it will go to education. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, President Udoff is not skeptical. Uh, the President of the Teachers Association, they're not skeptical. Uh, the superintendents are not skeptical. The school board's not skeptical. And I can tell you as the governor, I'll be there for the next two years, and this money is going to help the schools in California and our universities. Give any thoughts about the FPC? Oh, finally. <laughs> uh, when I was Secretary of State, I, one of the first things I did walking into the office, I found three anonymous donations for 95000 Now we got an, an anonymous donation of $11 million. This is probably the worst abuse in the history of California election law since the reform was put in. And I just hope that they uh, force uh, these shadowy figures uh, to come out from under their rock or the bushes or the forest, wherever they dwell. Uh, they want to find out who they are. And I think the fact that they're hiding is indicated perhaps some shame on their part. But the people have a right to know. When you put money into California, you have a right to know who's providing it. And we have a regulation on that. And uh, I'm hopeful the courts will, will agree with the Attorney General and the State Fair Political Practices. Governor, I remember when you were governor the first time, I seem to recall you, were, you embraced the whole small is beautiful notion. Uh, do you see any upside to shrinking government further? We're shrinking it. We're shrinking it. The, the University of California is getting a fraction of state support that it used to get. We got 30,000 fewer teachers. I mean, how much do you want to shrink? So, yeah, I, I've shrunk the governor's office 25%. I'm bringing my bag lunch. I came up on the middle seat. Uh, yesterday from L.A. I mean, I can do what I can. What you got to understand is there's never been a governor who's willing to cut and doesn't need any more of the spending. Now, I got to work with the legislature. I got to work with the law. I got to work with the federal government. I got to work with advocates. But to the extent that it is humanly possible to shrink our government, to uh, recalibrate it so it's most effective, I'm going to do that. And I'm just saying uh, the cuts we've made have gone pretty far. And right now, we need some revenue, and we need some revenue from the people who have it and can share it. Given that this is about the business community's role yeah. and you're getting your message out, I'm wondering how much did the kind of neutrality of, of most of the changes that you mentioned play a role in this, the kind of slipping support, at least at some polls, indicate? Well, I mean, the fact the chamber is not in opposition, the state chamber is pretty amazing. That's a very conservative crowd. Uh, if you look at our uh, support list, it involves a lot of Republicans, a lot of conservative people. And I think it's great that uh, uh, these business people are, are supporting us. Now, why uh, the polls are tightening? That's what happens with the tax measure. Nowhere else in America have uh, people said, let's take this to the people and let them be the author of their own fate. What's happening in California is going to send a message one way or the other to Washington. And that's probably why the Arizona folks are putting their money in here. They know what's at stake. Uh, to me, uh, what's uh, tightening the polls is just the, the, the fear that people have that uh, maybe you know, the money isn't enough, or maybe they don't want to pay it, or maybe, a quarter, maybe because some people, a quarter cent sales is too much for them. I don't know. Last question. And then you have deceptive ads that talk about impact on gas prices, and that's a totally false statement. Okay, thank you very much.